Right now, an overnight shooting in St. Landry Parish claims the life of two teenagers. And in Acadia Parish, a juvenile is dead and two others are hurt after a shooting Thursday afternoon at an apartment complex. Plus, an emergency meeting has been called for next week as tensions between the Biden administration and big oil mount over soaring gas prices. Live from Acadiana, your local news leader, this is KLFY News 10 at 5. Good afternoon and thank you for joining us. In St. Landry Parish, the Eunice Police Department is investigating a double homicide that happened late Thursday night. News 10's Elise Corville has more. Two teenagers are dead tonight and the suspect is still on the run. Police Chief Randy Fano says they are receiving cooperation from witnesses and are investigating every lead to quickly track down the suspect. This happened so fast. Uh, I mean, within seconds they were there, and then within seconds or less than a second they're gone. The victims are identified as 17 year old Aiden McCauley and 18 year old Paul Celestine. Chief Fondo says Thursday night officers were called to a convenience store at the intersection of West Maple Avenue and Boudreau Street. He says when they arrived, they found the victims dead in the parking lot from gunshot wounds. From the information we're getting and from the videos that we're getting, uh, there was a confrontation inside the store that carried outside. The shooter has been identified as 25 year old Travis Godfrey. Chief Fontenot says Godfrey drove away from the scene in a dark colored Dodge Challenger. If he's still in that car, we're getting information that he may be in, using a different vehicle now. But uh, it's just a matter of time before he's located, and what we'd like him to do. Is go ahead and turn himself in. Chief Fontenot says the shooting happened despite multiple police on patrol. He says Eunice police had additional officers from other agencies patrolling and working a proactive detail just blocks away from where the shooting occurred. It goes to show that no matter how many policemen we have on the streets, that if this stuff is going to happen, it's going to happen. If you have any information about the deadly shooting or the whereabouts of Godfrey, you are asked to call Eunice police. Reporting in Eunice, Elise Corville, KLFY News 10. A shooting at an Acadia Parish apartment complex left one juvenile dead and two others hurt. News 10's Jasmine Dean has details. I'm here in Crowley, where last night's shooting at the Kathy Apartments resulted in juvenile fatality. Last night, law enforcement was called after multiple shots were fired at the Kathy Apartment complex just before 5 p.m. Of the three people shot, one was killed with the suspect arrested and in custody. Everyone involved were juveniles. An eyewitness says that he heard four to five shots before he went inside. Shots were fired during this disturbance. Uh, three people were struck. Uh, one person has died since then, and we do have um, a suspect in custody at this time. All parties involved were juveniles. When asked what steps are being taken to reduce gun violence in Acadia Parish, Sheriff Gibson says his focus is to get guns off the streets. In Crowley, I'm Jasmine Dean, KLFY News 10. A second arrest has been made in connection to the shooting death of 19-year-old Terrell Fontenet, who was found dead in a parking lot of a Broussard gas station. It happened in April when police were called out to shots fired at the Exxon gas station on Bonan Road. Officers found Fontenet shot to death inside a vehicle. Rico Gabriel of St. Martinville was arrested Thursday and booked into the Lafayette Parish Jail for second-degree murder. This is the second arrest made in the deadly shooting. Jalen Charles of Generette was arrested in April. An Alabama community was rocked by gun violence after three people were killed at a church gathering last night. A 71-year-old gunman opened fire on a potluck dinner inside St. Stephen's Episcopal Church near Birmingham. Police say an 84-year-old man and a 75-year-old woman were killed. An 84-year-old woman who was being treated at the hospital also died of her injuries. The suspect, whose identity has not been released, is now in custody. Officials say he acted alone and there is no threat to the community. The U.S. Energy Secretary called an emergency meeting with oil executives for next week as tensions between the Biden administration and big oil mount over rising fuel prices. The meeting comes as President Biden is calling on the companies to boost output, threatening to use emergency authorities if they don't. News 10's Anna Warnicke joins us from our D.C. Bureau with more. President Biden is urging top oil executives to cooperate with bringing down prices at the pump. I've contacted them with my team has. 
to ask what their plans are and to give any suggestions they have. In a letter to top executives at seven of the nation's largest oil companies, President Biden says he is considering invoking emergency powers if they don't boost their supply. We're hopeful, we're optimistic, we're willing to work with this administration. Frank Macchiarola with the American Petroleum Institute says he welcomes the partnership if it results in action. But they need to not just change their rhetoric. They need to change their policies. Macchiarola says since President Biden's first day in office, he has introduced policies restricting American oil and gas companies from doing their jobs. They've cut off pipeline projects. They've proposed tax increases on American producers competing globally. You need to change course on those policies. With average gas prices now at $5 per gallon, Texas Republican Senator Ted Cruz says the upcoming conversation should have happened months ago. Biden is desperately trying to blame anyone else because suddenly the White House has discovered people don't like spending 100 bucks or 150 bucks to fill up their minivan or fill up their truck. The White House says U.S. Energy Secretary Jennifer Granholm plans to sit down with oil executives next week. In Washington, I'm Anna Warnicky. State Attorney General Jeff Landry and Secretary of State Kyle Arnold are appealing to the U.S. Supreme Court to overturn a ruling that the state must create a second minority congressional district. One third of Louisiana's population is black, but only one of the state's five congressional districts is a minority district. A federal judge ordered the legislature to redraw the districts to comply with federal voting rights law, but so far the Republican leadership has refused to do it. The KLFY News team volunteered today for a good cause for our Next Star Founders Day. News 10's Danielle Johnson has the story. This weekend, several businesses and corporations across Acadiana will be pitching in to give J.W. Falk Elementary School in Lafayette a makeover, and KLFY is one of them. It's going to be a lot of grunt work today. It's a little hot and humid, but we're excited to be out here. KLFY's volunteer crew is sweeping, raking, and bagging trash from the J.W. Falk Elementary School grounds to help give the campus a facelift. It's all for United Way of Acadiana's Day of Action. Uh, United Way of Acadiana has been doing the Day of Action for many summers as a way to get companies and individuals involved in volunteerism. Chris Cook, the general manager for KLFY, says this effort is also a part of the company's Founders Day of Caring. We like to come out and do whatever needs to be done. Uh, in past years, we have done food drives and we've helped stock shelves. Uh, we've gone in and done cleanup jobs just like today. To some, it may seem like a small paint job or parking lot polish, but for the students, staff, and teachers who benefit from the cleanup, it's a fresh start. Could easily say no and, you know, just stay in our cool office and not actually help and do something, but, you know, it's nice to be able to get out and actually help. Definitely enjoy being able to give back. Yeah. I feel like we do that as a station already, yeah. but it's nice to be able to put a, a, some blood and blood, sweat, and tears in it yeah, as well. The, the, I think the beauty of it is, you know, we get to do it on almost like an intellectual level and we spread, we promote businesses, we talk about issues in the community, whatever it is, but to actually get out there, get our hands dirty, get a few blisters. Sweat dirty, a little bit. Yeah, dirty our shoes. You know, I think we really <laughs> enjoy that part. It, it Like it shows that we're doing something and you can actually see the physical difference when we're done. In Lafayette, Danielle Johnson. And KLFY News 10. For the second year, city council members are recognizing the month of June as Pride Month in the city of Lafayette. Momentum surrounding a movement in Lafayette for affirmation of the civil rights of LGBTQ plus citizens came to an all time high in 2021, prompting council members to take action, memorializing the progressive strides of the community. Still ahead, a 91-year-old Crowley mother of 12 looks back at her life and shares some wise advice in a new edition of 90 Plus. And tomorrow, the CDC is expected to give its approval on COVID-19 shots for children younger than five. Backyard barbecue time in the backyard of John Connor, and the grill is going. Check out the meat. Big selection here. We'll talk to Shannon coming up a little bit later. And... Um, Looks like the weather's going to cooperate this evening for grilling, at least here. I'll have a complete look at that weekend forecast in just a few minutes. Right now, let's check in with News Nation for a preview of what's coming up tonight.